Hi everybody, Monday evening, meteorologist Joe Chaffee as we uh, take a look at what our weather is going, like, going to be like going forward. And uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new, glad to have you here. We are pretty much uh, an all-weather place and we uh, get into how weather functions and what to look for down the road as we look at weather models. And when we get close to an event, something, uh, we uh, get specific. I forecast generally for the New York City, uh, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley, Eastern Pennsylvania, that uh, general area. But we also, on my YouTube channel, we talk about weather around the country. And we also talk about weather in parts of southeastern Canada and Europe, uh, which uh, I, there are a number of you folks from across the pond who join us. Uh, especially from uh, from the UK and from uh, Ireland so welcome to everybody we're gonna uh, take a look for the first time in 12 days we actually have some current weather going on it's been exceptionally quiet usually the, it, the uh, la latter part of November or, or even much of the month of November can be an active stormy month around the country but this this year was rather different and uh, this is uh, the first storm system uh, to impact uh, uh, the United, the uh, continental United States, except for what's been going on in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm just showing you here the National Weather Service watches and warnings that we have up uh, this evening. We actually have severe thunderstorm watches up for eastern Oklahoma, uh, northwestern Arkansas, uh, cutting uh, Missouri on a, uh, on a diagonal. And we have to the north of that winter weather advisories across uh, much of uh, southern Minnesota, except for the extreme southeast, and also parts of the Dakotas down into northern Nebraska. Winter storm warnings up for a good chunk of the northern third of Minnesota. So if you uh, just kind of uh, take a line and draw it diagonally across the state from there north and west, we've got winter storm warnings. And we've got blizzard warnings up for the eastern uh, Dakotas into northwestern Minnesota from this uh, weather system that's booming through there. So indeed, a, a, a rather active night. This is, again, the first storm in almost two weeks to impact uh, any area of the U.S. except for the Northwest, where it's been uh, rather busy for, for quite a while. And there, the weather is calming down. So why don't we look at uh, what's going on uh, radar-wise. And I see you guys are all putting uh, uh, posts up on the chat. It's good to see you guys all there. I'll be with you in just a little bit. Uh, but we do have uh, the uh, actual storm center now working its way up toward the western lakes. And you can see on the radar this evening, there's, this is all snow here that's in uh, the, western, uh, the uh, eastern Dakotas and moving into western Minnesota. They're not going to get a lot of snow out of this. Uh, uh, this is, uh, be, uh, we're getting blizzard conditions because of some very strong winds of, of over 50 miles an hour. The actual snow amounts in some areas will probably be in the three to six inch, four to eight inch range. So we're not talking about one to two feet of snow here. This is really uh, the old fashioned definition of a blizzard, which does not have anything to do uh, with uh, one foot plus snows. It has to do with the uh, heavy snow falling for uh, several hours of duration where visibilities are brought down to near zero. And that's exactly what's happening here in the uh, Eastern Dakotas and through uh, northwestern Minnesota. Oh, and by the way, if you uh, look into eastern Iowa, down through Missouri, uh, on up uh, into uh, northeastern Oklahoma, we have a line of uh, thunderstorms here, and some of those thunderstorms are severe, so those, thunder th those uh, storms are moving right through the area where we have a severe thunderstorm watch. Uh, in, the, uh, in the east, uh, weather conditions are a bit calmer. I'm gonna go first to the Great Lakes radar and uh, we can take a look at this from the Great Lakes perspective and, and you're seeing some rain here in the northern lakes uh, the warmer air that's coming into the east now uh, triggering off a few uh, showers aloft at least in western New York but no, nothing that's going to cause any problems and uh, when we look at the satellite view uh, you're going to see uh, this storm system here with the cloud cover and a nice uh, good looking uh, satellite signature uh, of a uh, of, of uh, upper air support with this. Uh, you can see it here uh, moving through uh, the Dakotas now, getting ready to move on up uh, into northern Minnesota. The trailing front with the clouds that run uh, southward uh, from uh, eastern Iowa, western Missouri, 
and on up uh, into eastern Kansas. Uh, in the east, nice and dry. Uh, out in the west, uh, we've got weather conditions there which have been uh, so active for a long, long time out in the western part of the U.S., actually uh, showing signs of calming down. And I think that's uh, not a big, huge surprise because the uh, upper air pattern in the west continues to transition over and there's a big ridge of high pressure beginning to build in the western U.S. And you can see actually how these clouds are turning here. Uh, they are... Uh, moving northeastward and then turning uh, southward across southwestern Canada and eventually it will just turn southwestward. So you've got this upper high that's building up to the north and that's going to mean for calm and quiet conditions uh, in the west. And uh, by the way, it's also cold down in parts of California. In southern California, there's all sorts of hard freeze and uh, watches and frost warnings up uh, for that part of the US so uh, things are getting a little busy and uh, we are going to now take a look at where we're going with all this as far as the weather in the uh, eastern part of the United States we've got the brand new GFS model run and we have been talking about the fact that uh, we are seeing a pattern change to colder in the east we've been advertising that for quite a while now and really not much has changed from that respect um, we're going to put this uh, in motion here. You can watch the dates near the top of your the screen here, 12Z Tuesday, that's 7 a.m. Tuesday. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the map times, um, the, this is Greenwich Mean Time. So um, 12Z is noon in Greenwich, England. It's 7 a.m. in the eastern part of the United States. 18Z is 1 p.m. Uh, 0Z, which is midnight Greenwich is 7 p.m. Eastern Time, um, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and 6Z is 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So if you want to know what Greenwich Mean Time for midnight is, it's actually 5Z. So here's our front that approaches on Tuesday. You can see extent, uh, the uh, GFS has uh, showers uh, running from uh, much of uh, New England down in through the Ohio Valley and uh, extending southward. Looks like some uh, heavier weather across parts of southern Kentucky, central Tennessee, into northeastern Mississippi and northwestern Alabama with this. Uh, that front pushes eastward. Uh, we'll get it out of the way on Wednesday, and then we begin the process of it turning colder. Now, we've been talking yesterday about uh, possibilities in the uh, northeast, uh, the coastal northeast, for maybe a little bit of snow here. Um, on the Friday and the weekend and by the way that would extend down uh, into uh, the mid-Atlantic states down into Virginia and maybe even parts of North Carolina the issue is the wave that develops and how much of a wave develops how far north and east how far north uh, east it goes and how far northwest the precip gets and we've been kind of seeing models the uh, GFS in particular uh, on some runs it has it pretty far north and west in terms of the precip, precip on other runs it has it like it has it late this afternoon just kind of skimming the coast and then I'm still on other possibilities where it has it you know well offshore uh, I think the jury is still out on this and uh, today's run really today's model runs really don't make things much clearer then we have energy coming down for later Saturday, Saturday night, where low pressure is going to try to develop. Now, again, here we have models doing different things. Uh, the European was pretty bullish with low pressure developing, a second wave developing in that frontal boundary and bringing some snows Saturday night and Sunday for coastal areas from Delaware on up uh, through much of southern New England. The GFS has now suddenly gotten less bullish on this and treats this more as a weak weather front going by with some very cold air coming in for Sunday night and Monday. And then we have a diver uh, for uh, the uh, middle part of next week that shows up. We touched on this yesterday. Uh, suddenly we have a low in Chesapeake Bay on uh, Tuesday night, and then that goes out to the east. Now, it's all fine and dandy for models to do this, but uh, we know that as we go out further in time, we're going to see all this stuff uh, changing. And uh, yes... Uh, um, always smiling snow in Spain. I just saw your comment. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we uh, were showing that last week, if you remember, with regards to Spain. But let me get to, let's get uh, our homeland done here, and then we'll look at what's going on elsewhere. So let me put up the uh, the upper air, 
and let's get that in there and you're gonna see I'm gonna show the jet stream pattern up close before we go wider so we've got a ridge in the east right now pretty strong ridge which is not a surprise because of the system that's swinging out uh, across the uh, Midwest and because of the blocking that's going on that vortex is going to form in eastern Canada and hold there if you look on the upper left corner that's that upper high building uh, in the west and remember we're going to have a strong Pacific North America index uh, an off the wall positive index which means we're going to be under a strong ridge out in the west for quite a while and notice the deep trough in the east that comes in on Saturday now you might have a deep trough there, but that doesn't necessarily translate into storm development. Um, it, it's got to line up the right way, and it, it, it doesn't appear at this point that it, it, it lines up in a way that would favor a, a storm, of de storm development. might still favor a minor event, but then comes the next trough as we move into next week, and that is going to dig southeastward and it's pretty impressive so that's the one for the middle part of next week regardless of whether we get this to happen or not the bottom line is it's going to be cold especially when this if, if this uh, deep trough in the eastern part of the United States for the middle of next week I think we're going to see some very cold uh, temperatures across uh, much, much of the eastern third of the United States the Great Lakes the Northeast and the mid-Atlantic temperature is probably running a good 15 degrees below average or more so this is a pretty strong shot of cold air and you'll notice as we go deeper into the long range day 11 12 13 and on out to day 16 you still have uh, troughing uh, and lower heights at, at the 18,000 foot level the jet stream still pulling down colder air masses from Canada so it seems to me that the models are definitely indicating that this is going to hang around for quite a while this is what it looks like when we look at the whole pattern across North America and I'll show you with this upper air you can watch the look how it just changes uh, into this strong flow from northern Canada and the Arctic regions on southward and this is going to be with us for uh, quite a while and it's trough after trough now I think because of the 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 way the models you know how they start handling things in the long range and of course they're always adjusting and changing with this type of upper air setup I think at some point one of these systems in the that's uh, going to be coming down in that strong northern jet one of those is going to produce something uh, on the order of snow for the Northeast and for the mid-Atlantic states I, I just think it's a matter of time and certainly through all of this by the way the lake effect machine is going to be turned on and in some places it'll probably be turned on in a fairly uh, impressive way but you can see how that upper air just kind of holds there the vortex holds in eastern Canada the ridge holds in the west and builds up over the top into the Arctic regions you don't have much blocking here but you don't need it okay there are other ways to uh, bring cold air and winter weather into the eastern part of the United States and the ridge in the west particularly the fact that it builds the way it does and up up toward the poles more than compensates for uh, the lack of any blocking you know, the blocking is is vastly overrated uh, and it might be required if you want a blockbuster east coast snowstorm but that really is you know the the uh, the only thing that stands out about it you don't need it to be there in order for for um, winter weather to happen if you are a winter weather fan now let's go to uh, eastern Canada and take a look at how this all what the implications are uh, for uh, eastern Canada as far as the day-to-day -day weather is concerned and I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller so we can uh, you can see the whole uh, part of eastern Canada here and we'll go back to the beginning and of course uh, you know they're going to have to wait for the big changes so this front that's coming through brings uh, rain uh, through here through eastern Canada now we are at the end of the week on Friday and we've got this coastal wave that develops and that looks like it brings some uh, some snows to New Brunswick but it brings mostly rain to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and then another one uh, this is the one for Sunday in the Gulf of Maine and that brings mostly rain 
to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland again, but it does bring snows up to, to Labrador. Eventually, it does try to turn colder. And you got another coastal low as we move uh, toward the middle part of next week, and yet another one. So the way the trough is set up uh, for uh, Eastern Canada, uh, for Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, this is going to be more rain events than anything else, with most of the snows as you go further north up into New Brunswick, into Quebec, and eventually into Labrador. So it's very interesting how, how that works out uh, for you folks there. Now off to Europe because the models today are actually fairly bullish for some, uh, some snows. And I'll put this, we'll start from the beginning and we'll put it in motion for you. Uh, with the block shifting westward, of course, that allows weather systems to come in from the west. So that means a temporary warm up. But this is a pretty powerful storm that the GFS uh, brings out of the North Atlantic and moves up into the North Sea. I mean, we've got pressures down, you know, under uh, 970 uh, millibars. And then that low just kind of rotates and moves west, uh, moves eastward to a 961 low. That's going to pull down some cold air on the backside into England and Ireland late this week. And as we uh, move through time, that colder air uh, produces, uh, by the time we get to the end of the week, we're getting these uh, north northerlies or north northwesterlies coming down off the warmer, relatively warmer waters of the North Atlantic and the North Sea and producing some streamer snows across parts of England and Ireland. And moving through time, um, it's got another one. In the meantime, uh, you know, you get the snows that uh, occur in the usual spots in Europe. But look at this. I'm going to be curious to see. This is out at day seven, uh, which is next Monday. Uh, brings in some snows uh, into much of England. Uh, and low pressure drops southward uh, toward France and Spain with some snow there and some snow in the Alps. So it's a very active, you know, wintry pattern, both in the eastern part of the United States and uh, across um, uh, much of Europe. Very, very interesting uh, development here and, and how uh, things play out. You know, you learn something new every day uh, with all of this. And uh, I'm really uh, been getting very excited about, you know, learning uh, how uh, weather works uh, on the uh, across the pond. So those of you that who are watching from Europe, I also did get somebody who posted and made a, you know, I try to do these live streams during the week as early as I can because, you know, you guys go to bed early. It's uh, now 1120 uh, in uh, England or 2320. Uh, so I do get them done. You know, I try to hit this six o'clock. Now on the weekends, I've been pushing it to nine o'clock uh, to get uh, everybody in the U.S., but I'll see what we can do with that. Um, certainly when storm situations are going on, I'll do one earlier in the day along with the one at nine o'clock. So maybe over the weekends, if I got the time, I'll try and break up a live stream and and perhaps do it twice, but I, I, I got to see how my uh, schedule plays out. So I hope everybody's having a great evening. Let me uh, jump into the conversation here and say uh, hello to everybody that is on. Uh, good to see you all here. Uh, I'm not going to, all right, I will. Uh, so Carl White's from Coastal Connecticut, a big hello to you. Andrea Johnson uh, is on, you're new to the board, so uh, good to see you here. Uh, we've got, um, trying to get all the new folks uh, uh, for a big hello. Ryan Hastava, who hasn't been on for a bit, good to see you. Cynthia Gwynyaudis, uh, always a pleasure to see you here on board. And thank you so much, by the way, for hitting PayPal yesterday. I really appreciate it. Uh, always smiling from Dublin, Ireland. Uh, good to see you here. Um, and uh, keep me posted on what goes on weather-wise. Uh, for you guys. And yes, the UK and Ireland, some parts of Europe going to be hammered by snow, rain, and 70 mile an hour winds. That's that big storm that's coming out from uh, the North Atlantic, coming uh, across the North Atlantic and heading toward um, uh, Norway and Sweden. Sweden. Very, very strong storm system uh, indeed. Um, and let's see, John Organo watching the squirrels gathering nuts, which they do every year, no matter what. Uh, but they might be getting ready for something. Perhaps they have a better forecaster than me. I don't know. Um, Robert Hurley wants to know, will the ridge in the west sit or will it move eventually? I don't like that jet flowing straight down from Canada. I hate the cold. Uh, right now, it looks like that ridge is locking into the west and staying there. And it might, 
you know, it certainly looks like it wants to stay for the um, the two week forecast period on all the long all the weather models that I looked at today. Um, the good news for those of you who don't like it that way is that eventually those patterns do break down even temporarily. So uh, we'll see whether it's a longer this is going to be a longer term issue or not. Uh, normally, um, you get uh, the way my experience has been. You get these pattern shifts that occur from late November into mid December. They usually lock in for a while. So um, I'm thinking it might last certainly through the end of December and maybe even into the beginning of January before we see any adjustment. Now that's you know that's just a guess on my part. I you know I I, I don't know that uh, for sure. Um, Ryan Ford wants to know if the trough is more of a neutral phase, which the Europeans suggest. Um, uh, would that favor more in the way of snow? Well, the GFS with the trough from earlier today was actually fairly lined up fairly um, well with the European. Both models had, you know, the trough for sun for Saturday night, Sunday, kind of in a north-south position. So, you know, we've got these in-between model runs that do different things, and um, it, it's hard to keep track. I mean, the last couple of days. The in the uh, in between model runs were bringing you know snow here with a wave offshore on Friday. Then it flipped to the main runs, the zero and twelve Z. Then if it flipped back to the six uh, to the six and eighteen uh, with the zero and twelve showing nothing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, today's uh, today's European to me uh, was interesting, and I think uh, it's something you know we'll see what the overnight runs do. Of course. Uh, with this, it's we're getting pretty soon. It's going to be their turn. Um, it, it, it's very hard with these things when they flip like this back and forth because a lot of times, what winds up happening is that we wait till we get inside the short range, and all of a sudden the short range models go back to some earlier solution. So I, I'm I'm at this point kind of remaining agnostic with regards to how this is going to play. Um, let's see. Uh, Let's. Yeah, I appreciate that. Always smiling. Keep me up. Keep us up to date here on what's going on over there. Alicia Williams just saying hello. Um, the epic hunter of um, of um, what will slightly interior New York be like? Well, I assume you mean slightly interior. Let's say north of Route 84. It's going to be cold, and if you're more than slightly in the interior, uh, you'll probably get some lake effects. So I'm talking, you know, upstate New York, western New York, obviously, and western PA, Ohio. You guys are going to be getting into some decent lake effect action uh, over the next um, number of days uh, with, with, all, with all these changes. Fallen Angel, with regards to my um, uh, cat, much better. He's much better, was much better last night. Uh, when I left today, he was in very good shape. So uh, pretty happy about that. Uh, seems like we've got the insulin issue um, figured out, at least for now. Trish and Lou, Western Wisconsin, might see some snow. I don't know about with this low, though, uh, tonight, Trish and Lou. Uh, it looks like uh, that low is going to track to your west and north. So I I'm thinking you probably won't see too much with that. Uh, maybe, you, you, I don't know if where you are, you get into la uh, a lake effect off Lake Superior. Some of that may kick in uh, as we move into uh, tomorrow and the rest of the week. And certainly with these weather systems that are dropping down out of Canada with these, uh, with these cold air masses, I think you'll probably see some stuff along the way. But I don't think you're going to get much of anything with this uh, uh, deep low that's now running up uh, into the western Great Lakes. Um, let's just see... Um, uh, I, uh, Ian Simpson, I assume it's Ian. I have friends that pronounce it Ian, but I'm going to assume it's Ian. I'm watching with interest in the wintry weather outlook for the UK. Yeah, it looks like, you know, you guys might, uh, might get something out of that. Um, I'm going to, you know what, let's look at the snowfall map. Uh, I didn't do that today. So let's, let's go back and we'll, uh, bring the, uh, we'll bring the GFS up and we will, uh, take a look at the uh, GFS snowfall map for Europe and we'll also look at it uh, for the United States and uh, big thanks by the way to uh, Levi Cowan who uh, did some upgrades on the snow maps uh, hopefully uh, they will give us uh, better readings uh, to take into account when um, you know rather than do it off a straight 10 to 1 ratio uh, he's got some new snow maps and I'll show you those in a second um, I don't know that he has them up for uh, Europe yet, but let's uh, let me take a look. And 
Let's interact. Bring up the snow map. He doesn't have them for Europe, but um, oh, actually he does. So here is the snow map for Europe going out um, seven and a half days. And you can see, at least through a good chunk of southwestern England, there's quite a bit of snow that's being indicated here and also for Northern Ireland. So we can um, watch it play out over time and watch the growth uh, through Tuesday, Wednesday. And then we have that storm moving uh, across the North Atlantic uh, going into the weekend. You can see the snow amounts so in centimeters, by the way. That's not inches, uh, that's in centimeters. Uh, you can see over the 10-day uh, period a pretty bullish view of snow across much of Europe, um, the British Isles, uh, the um, Norway, Sweden, everybody seems to get into some snow down into uh, northern Spain. Uh, so uh, doing pretty well here from the standpoint of snow amounts in Europe. Now across the eastern United States, we um, have the 10-day period here. Now, I'm not sure which map this is. Let me make sure I have the right one. Okay, so let's go to... I'm going to try the... Let's go to 10 to 1. Yep, that's it. So this is off the new GFS, and you can see where the snow for the next 10 days lies. The, six, the uh, middle run didn't really do very much with these systems for Friday and for Saturday. Um, and going forward, it even doesn't do very much with the one next Wednesday. But I, I really think you got you got to use these snow maps with a big grain of salt. It's probably better to say that you know this is you know this is where we we'll, we would expect accumulating snows and kind of use that as your focus rather than focus on the specific amounts. We'll uh, jump to the southeast so that uh, those of you that are in the Carolinas can see in Virginia and point southward you can see what the 10 day snowfall shows up here uh, and again the you know you got this is going to change as always does and uh, the Great Lakes will uh, take a look there and of course you know this is lake effect action all through parts of uh, western Michigan you can see some of the lake effect that goes on through northwestern Pennsylvania in and around Lake Superior and of course the reflection of what you see in Minnesota and the Dakotas happens to be the storm that we're dealing with uh, right now. So um, all very interesting and very wintry uh, going forward. I do not have the teleconnection indexes because their website's been really weird lately. Uh, it goes down a lot and the last I checked it was down so let me just check again and uh, let's see if it's still down. And it looks like it still is. So that takes care of that. Um, <clears throat> let's, uh, I just want to, the ladybug infestation was a fail this fall. This year, thankfully, winter normally up and down the middle of the U.S. I had zero one night near 70 and less than 36 hours later last year in northern Arkansas. Yeah, you know, that, by the way, that points to a big problem here where I am because last year the winter was so warm that we had a huge tick problem uh, that uh, was was around all spring and summer and fall. And now um, with things seeming to normalize and we've had some cold days and a couple of cold shots, hopefully that will uh, get, well, hopefully the, uh, the, the we're not gonna have the tick issue uh, this year like we did um, last year. Cynthia Gwynyautis, yes, 60 degrees in Southern Indiana and it's thundering. Uh, yeah, you've got that cold air coming down. Uh, once those storms in the cold front go by, uh, you've got cold air going forward until uh, further no notice. And by the way, just remember, you know, when I say further notice, I mean that in general. Uh, could there be in this next, two, you know, 10 days to two week stretch, could there be the, um, the, the odd warm up for a day or so in between air, cold air masses? Sure, of course there, there could be. And there probably will be uh, in some places. But the uh, general trend uh, over the next 10 days to two weeks will be for below to much below temp uh, normal temperatures for pretty much everywhere east of the Mississippi and even slightly west of the Mississippi. And by the way, this cold shot is really going to push all the way down uh, into the Gulf states, uh, in, you know, down to uh, the coastal Gulf, Gulf states, uh, East Texas, Louisiana, and points eastward. So we are seeing 
definitely a very very cold shot of uh, of air so uh let's leave it at that i have a show at the top of the hour to do on fios one news uh, if you are in the new york new jersey long island um, Hudson Valley area and uh, you've got Fios you can tune me on at uh, 7 o'clock and my colleague Joe Rayo is on Hudson Valley I do Long Island and New Jersey and uh, this Saturday for those of you that are in my area I'll be on uh, WPIX TV channel 11 so you can check me out there Saturday uh, at 5 and at 10 o'clock so I got a busy week ahead of course you don't have to wait uh, for that because you've got the live streams here on uh, YouTube and uh, that's uh, going to of course uh, continue all week long and through next weekend and beyond just saw a question I want to address here Tom Adams uh, what uh, uh, at what rate do you think the oceans will um, uh, off Massachusetts will cool the ocean water temperatures uh, up our way uh, southern New England southeastern New England down to New Jer coastal New Jersey are running well above normal but I'm going to tell you right now um, that can be corrected pretty quickly all it takes is a couple of days of wind and some good upwelling and you can have those water temperatures drop in a big hurry so I'm not really overly concerned about that uh, we could see those uh, you know I, I would I would think over the next week to 10 days you're going to see those water temperatures normalize quite a bit uh, as uh, that cold, you know, cold air comes in, and we have a, you know, uh, at, at least uh, several days in that stretch where we'll have some gusty winds to uh, upwell, uh, upwell the ocean. All right, folks, uh, have a great day. Uh, we will uh, see you on uh, Tuesday, and we'll keep you posted on the website uh, if you want the latest on what the models are doing in between the live streams. Just check out uh, meteorologist uh, joechaffee.com.